things. How are you doing? Good to see you. I thought today I'd talk a little bit about how I set up my Boss Katana. I use them all the time for touring. Um, I've done a lot of touring recently where I've played abroad and playing abroad has a lot of challenges, one of them being travel. Of course, um, flying all over the place in America um, makes it really difficult to take amplifiers on the airplane. And so what I was tending to do was kind of rely on what uh, a guitar store would have in stock. And I kind of came to the conclusion that although my heart lies with traditional valve amplifiers, I mean, I love them. <laughs> you know, they all have, they have this kind of heart and soul that sort of, you know, it just has the sound of rock and roll to me. What I really needed was something that was uh, reliable, rock steady, indestructible, and was always gonna be there and dependable. And some of the first choices that I came up with, a lot of the guitar stores that I was playing in, didn't have. And that, of course, sort of caused a problem. So I've been using Boss Katana for quite a while uh, to be honest with you, in my kitchen, where <laughs> I wake up quite early, I've got little kids, and sometimes I'd wake up and want to have a jam or write something, you know. And um, I didn't want to be too loud because I'm going to wake them up. So I, I, I turn on, I've got a 1 by 12 uh, katana combo, and I would play downstairs really quietly. Of course, now I'd use the the Wazza headphones, which are amazing. But I play really quietly using the combo and it had this kind of valve sound at a low volume, um, which I was incredibly thankful for. It sounds like a valve amp. There, I mean, Boss gear is, I mean, you'll probably know this, it's pretty much indestructible. <laughs> I've, I've got a tuning pedal somewhere that will outlast me. Uh, I, I heard um, a stat somewhere, I think Peter Honore told me this, he said that Boss's main competitor is themselves. <laughs> Which is, is kind of cool, isn't it? So anyway, I thought, why don't I try taking these on the road? Um, every Guitar Center store has a Boss Katana. The other stores that I was playing at in Australia um, and other places had Boss Katana as well. So I was always going to find one. And, and then I thought, well, I need to, you know, learn to set them up and I've got to always have the same sound. I don't like things. I don't like to be inconsistent with my tone. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to really focus and take time to get the clean, the crunch, the gain, and then some fun sounds on the side so that when I'm playing a clinic, I can have a regular British crunch or kind of slightly pushed, you know, 800, 1974X kind of tone, or that Soldano sweet singing lead, or a clean tone, which admittedly I don't really use a lot of, but it's good to have it there for teaching. And, um, so I spent a few days before this tour really getting to know the insides and outsides of the Katana range. And they've just upgraded all of them with the new Katana range. And so I've been doing the same thing again because I'm definitely going to be playing some clinics and some gigs uh, towards the end of this year. And undoubtedly some of them will be in store clinics and I'll probably just use a Katana because it's practical and makes sense. It's less to carry around, less to set up, it's just there ready for me. And something that I love is the ability to store the different kinds of sounds. You've got the panel, you can work it out, see what sounds great. When you've got it where you want it, you store it. And, you know, it's practical and it's useful. How many more than four sounds am I ever going to need at a gig? <laughs> Probably no more than three, to be honest with you. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you uh, the different tones that I use. 
and talk about the settings that I've used to get them. I thought I'd also break out this Gibson Les Paul because it's really old and battered and it sounds cool and I haven't used it for a while. It does have a little bit of a tuning issue, so forgive me if things go slightly awry. I think in some instances I can forgive tuning over tone <laughs> until I replace these tuners that have definitely seen better days. So we'll start with the crunch tone. Um, I've got the pedal on the floor so I can, oh, I'll show you, <clears throat> here's my little boss pedal on the floor so I can change and chop between things which makes it really practical for me. We'll start with the crunch tone. I'm putting it on the crunch channel, surprise, surprise. Not a lot of the gain, because the crunch channel can really crank up to some sort of exciting gain levels. And then, you know what, I'll show you a, a view of the panel so that you can see exactly how I've set it. And it just gives you that guts and glory, kind of driven valve amp kind of sound. I'm tuned to an open slide tuning. <laughs> So you could probably see I'm playing with the tone knob on this. The dog ears, um, P90s, soap bars. When you play with the tone knob, it sounds great. Different settings, it's almost like different pickup configurations. I really enjoy that. So it's such a nice tone. It's such a human sort of valvey, real warm tone that I just love it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, channel two, unadulterated filth. I don't know about you, but when I'm playing lead, I want it to be a little bit kind of forgiving. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to have it too brittle and sort of in my face. Um, I like it to have a little bit of a little bit of sag, uh, enough gain that you can sustain the note into feedback, but not enough that it gets fizzy or mushy. And so, what I found is a setting that does that. And the secret really is that the katana range mimics a valve amp. And by that, what I mean is, if you have the master low down and then push up the volume, you don't get the valve break up power valve kind of sign. But if you crank the master and then use the volume to get the, the level of volume, you really feel the engine sort of kick in. My high gain lead setting is the lead channel. And then I've, I've pushed up the mids so that I'm cutting through any kind of backing track that's behind me. Um, I've got a bit more presence in the mix. I'm adding delay, I'm adding um, reverb. Now previously, um, when I was touring with the Katana, I didn't have options like the different kinds of voicing or the different kinds of cabinet emulation, but I really like uh, the modern and the vintage cabinet emulations, they're great sounding. Um, and the different voicings, it's just, you know, they're actually really different. They're kind of chalk and cheese. So you definitely gotta work with them and see which one sits with what it is that you wanna say with the guitar. But anyway, here's how my lead sound sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's my lead sound. I really like it. It's kind of easy to play. It's forgiving. You can drop tune. Tuning on this might be an issue, but you can drop tune through it and it sounds great. And it's always the kind of sound that you wake up, you make a coffee, you get ready to play, you turn it on. And that sound kind of makes you excited to play because it's a little bit forgiving, but it sounds great. Um, now, the sound I use the least, <laughs> which is my clean tone. I'm using the clean setting. Um, again, I'm, I'm pushing up the master, backing off uh, the volume, and I noticed that it's really receptive to different kinds of pickups. So for example, I was running uh, my ghost fret with a bare knuckle into it, and it was pushing it uh, and giving it a little bit of crunch, which I quite liked, but you might not want. <laughs> so you gotta make sure that the gain setting on the amp is backed off a bit on the clean channel and you'll get crystal clean, that cl a classic Roland uh, kind of clean tone for days. With the gain up, you're getting F type uh, clean tones that you can push, which are nice as well. So let's see how this sounds. It sounds out of tune. <laughs> I do love the sound of the clean. It's an organic sounding clean, but I don't use it a lot, to be honest. Mostly what I do is put it on clean and then maybe put a metal zone on it. of fun sounds that you can get from the katana range because they've got all of the effects built in and um i think something that i'm definitely guilty of is spending a lot like way too much time <laughs> playing with an auto wah or whatever configuration of crazy effects but the one thing that really did stick was that i love the octave sound and so for channel number four more often than not i'll have an octave sound and a bit of, a bit of crunch and I'll riff with it and sort of show people um, how fun that is because it's really cool. But I mean, it could be anything. I mean, it could be an extreme lead sound or a different kind of rhythm tonality. <laughs> Thank you. 
Something that's really cool about that octave sound is that the tracking is spot on. When I was a kid, things like that would, would they wouldn't keep up with you. But now you can sweep, you can shred, and the octave is just with you, laser guided, kind of the whole way. It's great. Um, I urge you to experiment playing with that. I really need to sort this guitar out. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. It was really fun for me. And uh, if you've got any questions, put them in the comment section. Um, and yeah, take it easy. See you soon. Bye.